Hello, friends! Okay, so something a little bit different today, because, as you probably noticed from the thumbnail of the video, um, tips and tricks for Baldur's Gate 3, which is launched right now on PS5. Um, basically, didn't have enough time to do a very elaborate uh, edited video for you um, for this embargo, but I did want to go over some of the starting points, some of the little things that you can do at the very start of the game to give yourself a fun time. As someone who's put, oh, I don't know, about 100 hours into the PC game and also um, is a professional DM, um, uh, so they keep telling me, um, I just thought, you know, like, let's let's go through a, a few little bits and pieces. I'll try to keep it as succinct as possible, but let's roll a new character too and see what happens. I've just, I almost just went to just go to my keyboard and mouse but no we're using a controller and bear with me because this is going to be very weird uh but new game first i tried to do um cross play on uh my on my uh two platforms um i've ov obviously already got all my saves on pc and i definitely have cross play ticked on the pc options but whether the patch isn't out yet for ps5 um i couldn't find that option on there but that's fine because don't want to show you too many spoilers anyway. All right, so Explorer Balance Tactician. I have Heritage Tactician. Uh, it, it mixed, actually. I mean, listen, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes the combat in this game is quite um, challenging. Um, and I think that's a good thing because it's just quite different. Uh, if you're not used to turn-based combat, um, you know, turn-based strategy, uh, it's going to be an adventure. But I say embrace that. Um, there is always a way around things. Um, it's very seldom that you would have to reload an earlier save. But, you know, if you did want to do that, that's totally fine. And often, you can avoid combat entirely. Um, although it may uh, enable a moral quandary or two. We skipped over the uh, lovely, the absolutely gorgeous um, cinematic just because I'm going to assume a lot of y'all have seen it already. Or, you know, you don't need me to talk you through it at this point. Just enjoy it in your own game. So we're through to character creation. Now, is it going to be custom? Is it going to be origin? I think for the purposes of this, we'll go custom. Although I will say, you know, origin characters, pretty great. Um, but of course, you know, these, most of these origin characters will be available as companions um, in your playthrough anyway. And on that note, I will say, um, Unless there's a class that you really, really um, kind of like, that's my class, I'm going to play as it. Um, if you're fairly open to just trying something out, and bear in mind you can respec. Um, when you get a little ways into the game, you can respec, and that's great. Um, I would maybe take into consideration, just like a real game of D&D, take into consideration the, the classes that you will have by your side and maybe make your decision based on that. Whether that is origin characters, so NPCs in the game, or if you're deciding to play multiplayer, maybe have a, a chat with your friends and sort of figure out a party that is a little bit more balanced, you know? I'm not saying you can't have a group of three, four bards, but you just might have a more difficult time. Um, but in the case of playing it single player, you know, you have a rogue, you have a starion, you have... I mean, I'm assuming you'll pick these guys up. You'll have Karlak, maybe, who is a barbarian. So, if you have all those classes at your disposal, you maybe want to go with one that you don't have. And in the case of this game... Oh, there you go. In the case of this game, that might be... Um, for example, in my first playthrough, I went as a sorcerer. Um, there's a little bit of an overlap, obviously, with wizard in that sense, but... I find it pretty well, uh, worked out pretty well. Bard is maybe a good option because, um, uh, you know what, let's get, let's get into it properly. I'm like, I'm getting ahead of myself. So in D&D, you uh, have six, you can see them on the side there, you have six major um, stats that, that all of your other abilities are are sort of like branched out from. You have strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. And so every class has their has like a, a sliding scale of which of those things is most important to them and which is least important. 
And the game very helpfully tells you um, with that little star there which is most important um, to a particular class. So Warlock, for example, is a charisma-based class. Pretty self-explanatory. A, a barbarian's main thing is strength. Um, rogue is dexterity. And essentially, I think you want to have a good balance because not just those six um, have different skills that branch from them. So for example, from dexterity comes sleight of hand, which means, and stealth. So that means that rogues are naturally very good at stealth and sleight of hand things, which means Astarian should be your go-to to doing anything sneaky. So he will be better at lockpicking than Lazel, than Karlak, than anybody else in the party. Um, so you should use that. Um, because, as you can see, every skill has a numerical value attached to it. And um, when it comes to making um, skill checks, uh, which we'll get into later, skill checks and saving throws, it just means that they have a higher number that will be added to the dice roll, which means that success is more likely in their case. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back and let's just do... For the purposes of this, let's go custom. Let's go body type one. Let's go female. Let's go race. We've got elf. We've got tiefling. We've got draw. We've got human. Um, githyanki, dwarf, half elf, halfling, gnome, dragonborn, half orc. So quite a choice, right? And as you can see, there are there are little little differences between um, between each of the races you can you get um, certain things that make certain race slash class combinations better I'm like hesitant to say that because you can make anything work it's absolutely fine and that is the beauty of this game and of D&D as a whole but if you are wanting to min-max a little bit, if you're wanting to create the most effective character possible, um, then that's something to bear in mind. You want to be looking through all these little things, you know, like, um, for example, a lot, of a lot of races have dark vision, which means they can see in the dark better, which might be good for rogues. Um, I don't know. Uh, blah, blah, blah. There is no race and class that I... I would say is better for a beginner than any others. I mean, maybe if you don't want to bother getting too much in, things get a little more complex when it comes to spell casting. And so if you wanted to keep things as simple as possible, human fighter, you know, that's absolutely fine. If you want to just bonk things with a big sword, wear nice armor and not worry about it too much. And then, you know, get a little bit more spicy with your second playthrough. That's that's fine too. I mean, I'm very fond of a tiefling. Dry, pretty interesting. Get a little Dancing Lights cantrip. You get um, superior dark vision. Um, but, you know, it's all just different flavors of, of whatever you like. Um, for this, let's go. So I'm doing like lawful good on my current playthrough. So I want to I be a bit evil on my second playthrough, so I'm thinking I'm, I might do something a bit spicier with that. But let's see. Two appearance, so sub-race. Yes, so <laughs> it gets more complex. There's races and then there's sub-races. There's classes and then there's subclasses. Um, and would you believe, not all of them from D&D are available here. There's even more. Um, let's see. Dry half-elf. Oh, dry half-elf looks fun, though, doesn't it? I might go that. Okay. No. Rogue, sorcerer, warlock, wizard. Now you might be asking yourself, what's the difference between sorcerer and wizard? Aren't they the same thing? No. Narratively speaking, a wizard is someone who studies very hard and yes, goes, uh, goes through schools of magic learns the ways of magic whereas for a sorcerer it is innate it is their birthright um and for that reason they have slightly fewer spells at their disposal they have some fun little subclasses there as well um and warlocks warlocks are kind of again there's a bit of overlap but they get some unique spells um they all are also a little bit better with 
weapons and um and they have pretty much the m the most powerful uh, cantrip in the game which is eldritch blast what's a cantrip i hear you ask a cantrip is a spell that you can cast again and again and again and it doesn't draw on your resources it doesn't draw on your spell slots don't worry we'll get to those and um yeah it just doesn't cost anything to do so cantrips can be very important um choosing the right one and uh knowing when to have them um spell slots so spell slots are, are what makes i think baldur's gate 3 quite interesting and maybe a little bit more difficult um to sort of figure out um than some other sort of rpgs um for newcomers because you can't cast spells maybe as freely as you're used to and in particular um what can we, what would we choose? let's let's choose bard let's let's just go with bard because i think that's a good support character for the party that we're making and you get some good spells as a bard so bards are all about you know bolstering your party so bardic inspiration is a very important thing um that you give uh you give boosts to your uh, allies attack ability checks and saving throws rolls um but you know okay let's see let's go let's let's this is all great this is good let's do that um we're going bard and then cantrips what have we got we've got vicious mockery standard and blade ward do i want blade ward uh, minor illusion I'm gonna no no no. I'm gonna go Mage Hand instead. Why not? Uh Mage Hand skin it can be quite useful. Um spells. We've got So you've gotta pick four selected out of all of these available ones. We've got what's this? Animal Friendship, Bane, Dissonant Whispers, I do quite like that. Uh and we've got Hideous Laughter and Heroism. So we've got healing as well. A uh, healing word. Healing Ward is great because that's a bonus action rather than an action, which means you can do a wee attack or another spell and then also cast Healing Ward. But again, you need to be careful of your spell slots. Um, God, it's so hard to... <laughs> it's so hard to explain everything in a nice... eloquent way... eloquent way... eloquent way that, you know, is... that makes sense. Speak with animals. That's always good to have, I think, because there's a lot of animals in this game, and it's so fun. Starting instrument. Do I want a drum, a flute, a lute, a lyre, or a violin? I'm going to go with a lyre. Why not? Background charlatan. Yes. So your background is kind of important because you do get um, proficiencies in other skills, which is what I mentioned before, which means you're the number that you add to a dice roll for deception and sleight of hand, for example, is greater, which means you're more likely to succeed in those skill checks. Um, so just have a think about what you want your character to do, you know, what kind of things you want to be good at. As you see, charisma is our most important um, ability, and we don't really need anything in wisdom. We definitely don't need anything in strength. Unless you decide to multi, uh, multi-class later, um, that's fine. Skill proficiency. Ah, so here we go. This is what I was saying before with your skills. So this is these would all be on your character sheet if you were playing D and D IRL. Um, so you know, sleight of hand, really good. I should be should be chef's kiss with that. Athletics, not the most, not the most. Uh, I haven't been to the gym in a while. Um, Plus five to all the intimidation performance. That's because of the old charisma. It's it's pretty good to be a face. By which I mean, you know, you're the person in the party that does the talking. Turn on the charm, coax and cajole. There's a, there are there are a lot of instances in this game where it all comes down to talking someone into or out of things. Um, persuasion, intimidation, and deception come up quite a lot, and it's it's pretty good to be to be okay at those, but you don't have to talk, you can just bonk things on the head, you know? Um, look at how pretty we are. Alright. And then you think you're done with a character creation, and then you've gotta start all over again. Um, 
Let's not take too long. You can you can get well into this if you want to. I'm just gonna huge difference between those two, by the way. But we're not gonna get into it now. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Ah, it's himself. Oh yeah, looking well, looking good. Here's all our different actions. You can see this is uh we can perform. We can speak with animals. Here's some of our spells here. There's ranged attack, unarmed strike, bardic inspiration, piercing shot, some of our spells here. And then you can see our spell slots there down at the bottom um, and, our, and the number of bardic inspirations we have. So those are the number uh, of both of those things that we have until a long rest. Um, there are two types of rests in this game. There are short rests and there are long rests. Short rests, you can do anywhere um, and they will just immediately replenish I think 50% of your hit points and if you're a warlock it will restore your spell slots but for anyone else that's all it will do it will just give you a little bit of health well, a fair bit of health back but you will not replenish your spell slots you need to do a long rest in order to do that um, which if you're a spell casting class it's kind of rough, you know? You need your spell slots to really be at your full potential. Um, but uh, there's no real, except for a, a few circumstances throughout the game, and you really need to just use common sense on it, there's no real downside to taking a long rest. Um, it just means that you will get into your, your relaxed clothes for the night, you'll go to camp, um, and actually it's good to do because it means that you check in with your um, with your party, um, you can advance your relationship with them in a lot of ways. But yes, long rest is good to do. Um, and uh, the other thing about long rest is that um, when so there's an option. Where is it? Here. Let's find out where it is. Here. We are here. Maybe it's not available yet. But um, yeah. when you when you choose to go to camp. Um, that and take a long rest wherever wherever you chose to do that that is where at the end of your long rest and you choose to leave camp it is where you'll go back to so it's not a matter of you will immediately leave the dungeon that you're in or you'll lose progress in the area it'll send you back to where you are before so don't worry about that and you know sometimes you you kind of should take long rests because years of human otherwise history, you're really going to struggle dwarves, with um, all the combat that you come up against flash behind your eyes so, um, just turn down the volume there. So you, yeah, don't be afraid to take long, long rests, uh, is the moral of that story. Ooh, hello. So what just happened there was a, what's called a passive perception check. And there's, there's not a ton that you can do about that. That is based on your stats. And, um, so if you're naturally better at your passive perception is different from your, from your perception as a skill. Um, and it's kind of like the game's equivalent of when a DM rolls behind the screen and doesn't tell you why they've just done it. <laughs> so you're kind of like, well, if you fail, you're like, well, what was that about? What, what should I be aware of? Um, but yeah, it's just, if you fail, don't worry about it. It's probably fine. Um, but so, you sound afraid. Who am I talking to, a man or a brain? I think we all knew the answer to that. Husk. You realize you're talking we to an intellect devourer, a minion of the mind flayers who abducted you. So there we rolled an arcana check and we passed. So we get a little bit of extra information there. Um, and, you know, there will be moments in the game where, you know, obviously uh, magic users are going to be better at arcana checks, but there'll be, there'll be strength checks and, um, you know, athletics checks, um, acrobatics checks in the game that natural melee classes will be more predisposed to succeeding as well. So it's designed in a way that it's, there's no, no one has an advantage over anybody else really. So it's all about the role play. What makes sense? So there's no right or wrong answer. Uh, if you want to destroy the brain, if you think that's a good thing to do, you do it. If you, I, I'm, I'm leaning to more, more towards a, 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 a more evil character, as I said. So, do I want to gently pry? Well, you know, if we're going by natural ability, 
you know, Dex is what I'm best at in all of these things. So we're going to do our first skill check uh, of the game. There we go. So it needs to meet or exceed the target number. And your character skills add a bonus to this roll. There we go. Nice and easy. So we get a plus two to whatever we roll. The difficulty class is 10, so that's fairly easy to beat. Um, so we've got, we've got a better than 50% chance of succeeding when you add in our modifier. So. <gasps> we failed. Now later in the game, we will be able to uh, sort of stockpile what's known as inspiration, which will allow you to re-roll checks that you really want to succeed. Um, the brain we don't have any right now, so... <sighs> Gotta destroy the brain. I tried! Ooh. <laughs> Lovely. There we go. Sorry, little brain. Sorry, little intellect. <laughs> Murnath fell to a lethal blow. Sorry, Murnath. Um, I'm sure that won't bite us in the butt later. That was our first skill check. We failed miserably. <laughs> a sign of things to come. But hey, that's just... That's the beauty of D&D &D and uh, Baldur's Gate 3. It's, and at some level, everything more or less comes down to luck. Even you can have the best plan ever, and it'll just happen. <gasps> so here we are. We're on the Nautiloid now, and oh dear, there go the Githyanki and their red dragons. <laughs> we look so silly in our little rough. Uh oh. I love Lazel so much. Ah, <gasps> fuck yeah. So with Lazel now in our party, we have uh, we have someone who's gonna. Bonk the enemies on the head, do a nice little bit of damage while we go yay from the side. We we'll do a bit more than that, but you know what I mean. All right. So combat happens in rounds. Each participant gets a turn to act. Um, roughly in D and D, every round takes about six seconds real time. Um, but obviously this is turn based. You can take as long as you like. Um, so we've got actions, bonus actions. You've also got reactions, uh, which we'll get to and you've got movement and generally speaking every sort of medium-sized character has about 30 feet of movement um so here we go so i am currently so i'm i'm the bard so i don't need i don't need to be up close to enemies um because i am you know i'm a spellcaster that's my main thing so i will cast I don't want to cast Yes, Dissonant Whispers or Vicious Mockery. So, insult a creature, it has disadvantage. So, ultimately, my job is not really, at this point, is not really doing damage. The best thing I can do is uh, buff my uh, party members and slow enemies down. What you want to do is you want to be doing as much on your turns as possible while making sure the enemies do as little as possible. So if I frighten a creature, it'll be easier to hit and it cannot move. So that will be useful for Lazel. So so it has a 60% chance of working. I'll take that. So let's... Pew! I also did some damage, so that's all right. And I killed it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, ending my turn. Well, let's dismiss that. Can I... Do I have any bonus actions I can take? I mean, yes, I can perform. I can cast Healing Word, as I said, that is a bonus action, but we have full health, so that would be pointless. Um, I could shove. Shove. Go on, then. Seems like the best way. Yay, and I managed to shove, because that uh, that did require a roll. So now I can end my turn. And now it's Lazel, who does not have enough movement. However, she does have ranged attacks, so. Yeah, you can see how far they can move there. Um, so let's move over to here. And then let's do a ranged attack on Dawn. 85% chance, that's pretty good. Is he dead? Yeah, okay. So, and that is, I believe, the only... Yeah, I've got second wind, but again, don't... Lacerate, I don't 
think I have... Yeah, no, I don't have the movement for that, so I will end my turn. Ah, rude. So it's my turn again, so let's go. Actions, let's go. Can I go leave a creature prone with laughter? So this requires concentration, which means that there's only one enemy left, so this is fine. But if you are casting a spell that requires concentration, you will need to maintain that concentration. Um, so rather than rolling to attack that enemy, for that, um, for Hedy's Laughter, the enemy needs to make a saving throw against it. Um, and uh, it succeeded, which means that it, it didn't uh, take any damage on that. Or it didn't. It didn't work. Grand. We will end our turn there. I know Lazel's gonna. Ninety-five percent. This imp is done for. There we go. Sweet. Let's talk. Not now. We Let's. Must go to the helm. Control over the okay. Fine. 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 Oh yes. Lazel took a little bit of damage, so why not? I feel better. Nice. Good for you. So why did I bring up the map? There we go. Okay. So that's where we're headed. The ship won't be able to take another dragon attack. We yes, I definitely have that. Snakes. Thank you. Take that too. All right, and we'll climb up here. Thank you. Arterial mesh. Lovely. Mmm, I, I love that they actually called it a sphincter today. Call, it, call a sphincter a sphincter, you know? Right, who's this? Hello. Uh, that could have been you. Let's do this. The console appears uh, we need new clothes. I can't take us seriously in that outfit. Uh... Look for a the switch. Are completely unrecognizable at first. Another mystery. Dang it. So we failed that arcana check, so we can't... <laughs> nope, no idea. We want to get this person out. So let's go through the sphincter. Oh, hello. You alright, mate? She doesn't notice you. So basically, like, I think for Baldur's Gate 3, the best advice to give is just explore. Explore everything. Think a little bit outside the box, even. Um, remember that you don't have to fight. You don't have to go like you. You can use your spells very creatively in a lot of uh, instances. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. You are beautiful. You're a brain on legs, but that's still very sweet. Thank you. Okay, use. The console appears dormant. Sorry, the rune. Let's do a little arcana check. Why not? So we have a plus one to intelligence, which isn't much, but when you're talking a difficulty class of ten, every little helps, right? So, let's roll. Sixteen! Let me tell you, later in the game, like, there are instances where you, because you can get items that will give you a, a boost to your, um, your rolls, you can get, like, um, guidance is a very handy cantrip that a lot of characters will have that will give you a plus, um, well, it'll give you a 1d4 roll added to your number. Um, it can be impossible to guidance. fail at some certain Otherwise, things. Perhaps it will open the nearby pod. So that's probably because you succeeded that arcana check, you get a little bit more information than you would have otherwise. Um, that's why it's so fun. Do we want to will the pod to open up? Yes. Why not? I actually avoided using any of the illithid uh, stuff in my original playthrough because it's completely optional. Difficulty class too. Um, but I'm being a little bit more evil in this one, so it's the it's the honestly as someone who's played this game for hours and hours and hours, I still feel like I've barely like I know that I've barely scratched the surface in of certain storylines within the game. And the things that you do really do make a difference. Across your mind. You feel sated. It's always good to feel sated. Um, yeah, it's incredible. Like you can you can play like complete a completely different story dependent on whether you're good or evil or whatever. At last. I thought I was done for. 
Oh yeah. You alright? I thought that damn thing was going to be my coffin. Thank you. Your mind <gasps> lurches into her thoughts. Her gratitude is mixed with wariness. Because you have a gift with you. <laughs> Pays us like what? Dangerous company. Let's go, gang. Let's go, besties. Um, we're going this way. It's actually wild what the different perspective. Like, this looks completely different than my PC playthrough because we're we're on that sort of like almost third person over the shoulder view rather than the kind of top down. Right, we're all full on health, gals. So let's. I'm just trying to hit on you. Of course, if you're new to the game, I'm sure you know already. But uh, romances are a thing. Um, and it's a lot of fun, uh, is all I'll say. Um, oh, here we go. Hello. Oh. It's a problem with horns, they make it, make very good, e very easy for a mind flare to grab onto you. And have a little nipple. Ooh. The last nibble he ever had. I'm no thrall. We will deal with the gate after we escape. And we rolled initiative. So, and we do have a number of there's I mean it's very generous 15. We could we could finish this whole fight in 15 runs. But um yeah, so as you noticed, uh combat um at the start of combat when it is initiated, everyone rolls initiative. And that determines the um, order in which everyone gets to move, which you can see at the top there, that is the order of initiative. Um, more dexterous characters have more uh, more of a chance of being higher on the initiative list than others. Um, and as you level up, you can also get the uh, alert feat, which means that you cannot be surprised and you generally uh, are pretty high up on that as well, which is very useful for characters that you generally want to move early on in combat anyway so it's because the combat it's like like i said before it's not just about doing damage it's about setting yourself up to win and in this game it can vary wildly whether you are um whether you win or lose um based on how like how you set yourself up before the fight even starts let's try let's try and let's try and do this Hey, so we made it fall prone. Um, so yeah, it, it can be like, as you as you explore the world, you'll notice that um, there's different terrain, for example. Um, yeah, sure, why not? Oh, not enough resources, I, I used my action. Okay, it all, and it tells you down at the bottom, you've already used your action, but you do have a bonus action if you would like to use it. We don't need cure wounds, <laughs> don't. I can give, yeah, let's give a little bit of bardic inspiration to Lazelle. Go on. And then we'll end my turn. And it's the Mind Flayers go. Uh, so let's... Go and attack. 95% chance of winning that. That's good. Dead. We'll end that turn. And we will... You also have other actions. Um... Let's dash. So dashing increases your movement speed, but it does count as an action. So it means that I can't also get an attack this round for Shadowheart. Um, rogues as a class can use dash as a bonus action um, because they're naturally speedier. Um, do we have any? No, we'll just skip that go. Um, but yeah, it's just, it really pays to know the difference between um, uh, between actions and bonus actions, and also um, just the little little things that um, mean that characters are more or less likely to succeed on their rolls. Because even though you can't see it happening, rolling is happening for each and every one of your attacks, just like it would do in a D&D &D game. It's all based on the numbers on your character sheet, basically. Um, but for example, uh, 
if um if a melee character is in range of is is in melee range of a ranged character and that's a spellcaster or uh, an archer for example they will be in a threatened state which means they have disadvantage on their attack rolls which means they are more likely to fail those attack rolls um let's do ranged attack right now. ah um but knowing those things mean that you know you're you'll be better placed to why aren't you moving okay so you can go to about here but let's keep this keep them busy okay all right and then let's keep moving as well there we go now shadow heart is gonna keep going up this way but let's uh dash again Okay. go all right go on off you go Whee! Don't worry, we've got like 14 more rounds before that's going to happen. And it's handy because look, the line is white up until the end of your movement and then it is red. So it shows you how far you can go, um, which is definitely very useful to know. We'll keep moving, keep her moving there. And it also, that little bar at the, in the bottom in the middle over there, <laughs> just above your action bar, that'll also show your movement too. How much movement you have last. Oi, rude. Let's make a ranged attack. Why not? We don't have the movement to make a main hand attack, so we will make a ranged one instead. Okay. Oh god, Shadowheart. Um, let's make you dash again. Dash, 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 dash. No, we need to go around because do you see that red arrow that's coming off that boar there? So if you go too close to a an enemy character, or if you're close to them and you try and move away from them you will provoke what is called an attack of opportunity um so that's about as far as i can go which is a reaction which means they can do it in addition to their turn um you can do it too if an enemy is um oh, there we go perfect um if an enemy moves away from you um but yes, generally if you see that red arrow, that means you will provoke an, act, an attack of opportunity, unless you disengage, um, which is a thing that you can do. So yeah, I do, I genuinely think this game, um, if you're interested in d and I've said this before, um, apologies if you've heard me say this about a hundred times on the channel, but if you're interested in d and um, if, and you're like not sure the best way to learn the rules, aside from reading the player's handbook cover to cover, this is a really great way to do it. This is a great way to literally build the class, the subclass, the race that you're interested in playing and learn what they can do. Um, learn all the little bits of ins and outs. I, I think this is actually a, a fantastic way um, to get into D&D. &D. Um, just to learn the little bits that you might be unsure of. Um, before you get into a campaign proper uh, with with a group and with a DM, um, which is obviously the best ever. We'll be seeing all these guys later as friends or foes, who knows? Oh dear. Whee! Oh yeah, what long tentacles you have. Boff. <laughs> <gasps> Amazing. I love this game so much. There's bits unique items. Oh cool. Um there's bits of things everywhere. Um, so look, our s movement is slowed because we're in water. Um, difficult terrain, deep water, that means if we were in combat, it doesn't really matter because we're just um, exploring, but if we were in combat, difficult terrain means your movement speed, 30 feet, is halved, um, which obviously is not what you want. Um, so you don't really want to be... If you can avoid difficult terrain, you want to avoid it. Um, for sure. So it really pays to pay attention to all those little tooltips. The, the, the tutorials are there to help you. Um, oh, hello. <laughs> I almost walked right over you. Uh, 
Now I, because I'm playing a slightly more evil character, I would reach the artifact, but she is very attractive. <laughs> and I'm only human, sorry, I'm only half elf, so. Mm. Playing the long game here. You're alive. I'm alive. Know what's at stake. One, it would have been all too. Lead the way. Thank you. So as you've seen, Shadowheart approved of that. That's nice. The, uh, a lot of people assume the romance system in this game is based on approval. I don't know whether that's true. Um, I mean, it's certainly based on something, but, uh, so yeah, look, now we can control Shadowheart because she's in our party. Shadowheart is a cleric, um, which means you get access to lots of nice, uh, cleric-y spells, including some healing spells. She's got a lot of other, uh, moves in her repertoire as well. Um, but yes, I am really excited to play this game again. I'm in Act 3 in my other playthrough, but I'm still excited to go right back to the start and try it out on PS5 as well. Oh yes, do check your books, everybody. You can find some really interesting things in books, um, which I know will shock nobody who's played an RPG before, but it is does uh, bear repeating. Um, tell you what, let's let's get to... Can we get to... Yay. I'm taking the fish because I believe that is a camp supply and you need supplies in order to rest at camp. There we go. Now we've got a lovely little um, waypoint. You can use these to fast travel. Way too invested in getting rid of the fog, fog of war from everyone. Oh, is it a battle? I think it might be. All right. Let's go. Listen to whispers. Are you too far away? 60%, that's fine. One. All right, fine. Come on, guys. Come and get it. <gasps> now, Shadowheart being a cleric uh, is mostly, um, is a spellcaster, uh, has disguise. So these, these spells, not that useful for battle, but very useful for other for other social dilemmas and social problem solving, which is just as an important a thing in this game as combat is. Um, guiding bolt, inflict wounds, um, firebolt, sacred flame. Now, sacred flame and firebolt are cantrips, which, if you recall, you can cast as much as you like. Doesn't cost anything. The spells that cost a spell slot you can see they have one there because they will cost a spell slot you can see uh, it also highlights spell slots down there in the corner when I'm highlighted when I'm hovering over them but sacred flame firebolt do not so let's cast firebolt 80% as well now cantrips because you can cast them as much as you like it makes sense that they're not as powerful as a full fat spell but you can still get you can still get um, a decent sort of go with uh, with them. Uh, that I cast uh, my spell that I cast on that one means it's frightened, so it can't do anything, and that's why it's worth doing things even if they don't do that much damage. Because now that made this uh, this round much easier for us. We're at disadvantage because these are too close to us. And remember, as a spell casting class, if we're in melee range, uh, we don't like it. We are threatened. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't do anything. So let's cast Vicious Mockery. Why not? 60%. Get thee gone. Ugh. Ugh. Um, however, it's saved, so it um yeah. It it sort of guarded against uh, our attack there. So that didn't do anything. <laughs> But Shadowheart's about to mess them up. Um, oh, still getting used to this system. I pressed triangle when I didn't mean to. Um, I think I will do a ranged attack. There we go, because it was pretty easy. It was one hit point. I was, uh, all right, so now I go R1, let's go. Now, Sacred Flame, I don't roll to attack on that. I roll, they have to, 
they have to roll a saving throw for that. And because of that, it's not always it's not always super effective in combat. I I seem to have really bad luck with it. Um, let's try it. Why not? But the good thing about that is because as a as a spellcaster, you're not obviously you know I'm threatened at the moment. Um, well, they're threatened, but I'm also threatened. And remember, if you're threatened, you're rolling a disadvantage. However, if it's an attack that requires a saving throw, you're not at disadvantage. These are the things that it's worth knowing about! Ha ha! Let's take the brain. All right, end turn. And then, uh, go on. Saved. Dang it. All right. Let's go. Inflict wins. Why not? 95%. Let's go. There we go. Perhaps our survival isn't such a distant prospect. Thanks. I like you too. Oh, hello. Here's a fan favorite character over here. I've got one of those brain things calling. He's got the internet in a bit of a tiz. Certainly my you TikTok for you, you Paige. Like you killed the others? I was hoping for a kind soul. Well, not to worry. <gasps> oh! oh my. Uh, Dex, why not? Difficulty 10, we can do this. Yeah! Yeah! Should we kiss about it? I saw you on the ship, strutting about whilst I was trapped in that pot. What did you and those tentacled freaks do to me? What would you like me to do to you? I was ready to anyway, with that lovely threat of death, uh, that is where we'll leave it. Um, I am going to do probably more Baldur's Gate 3 tips in the not too distant future. I've already done a, a guide for dummies. It's PC specific, but I think a lot of the tips still apply. So if you're new, if you're just getting started this weekend on PS5, congrats. Check it out. Why not? Um, it should be helpful. Um, oh, you've got such a great journey ahead of you. Uh, I hope you have a lot of fun. Let me know how you're getting on. And if there's anything specific you want me to do a video on, combat, uh, romance, uh, whatever, let me know uh, in the comments and I'll try and get around to it. Until then. Um, good luck getting that tadpole removed and also romancing all of your party. Whatever happens first, you know. Bye!